Hi there. I'm Mike MacArthur, librarian at the Oshkosh Public Library, and welcome to another episode of Librarian Learns. This is the series where I take a look at some local Oshkosh history topics that either I've been asked about at the library or that I've wondered about myself uh, as I've been living here. This is actually the first episode in a mini series within this series that I'm going to be calling and now it's a parking lot. This is where I take a look at some parking lots and dig into what was there before the parking lot. Short reminder, these are not full histories, more like short introductions to these topics. Uh, good like uh, cocktail party information to throw out while you're chatting with people. If you notice that I left something important out or you just have some interesting memories to share, list them in the comments. And with that, Let's get started. Automobiles and parking in Oshkosh. The first horseless carriages started to appear in Oshkosh in the late 1890s. By 1900, there were 104 cars in the city. By 1916, there were over 1,600. And by 1938, there were nearly 10,000 cars in Oshkosh. Almost one car for every four people living in the city uh, in 1938. Grim historical note. The first death attributed to an automobile occurred on July 4th, 1903, when Dr. H.H. H. Mugley struck Oshkosh resident Alfred L. Tuttle at the corner of High and North Main. Needless to say, the automobile completely changed American life and urban design. Older cities, like Oshkosh, were presented with a unique challenge of adapting their cities to meet increased car usage. And thus, the eternal quest for more parking began. So the city has always been looking to put as much parking adjacent to local businesses as possible, particularly in the downtown area. Study after study have shown that people in Oshkosh generally will not walk more than about two blocks to get to their destination. Jefferson Street. Today I'm going to be looking at the parking on Jefferson Street, specifically the 400 block from Washington Avenue up to Merritt. The parking on the 400 block of Jefferson didn't show up all at once. Uh, it took a series of decades for it to become what it is today. On what was uh, 19 Jefferson Street stood the Oshkosh Clinic. So at 19 Jefferson, there was an apartment building built there somewhere in the mid to late 1890s. Around 1919, a group of physicians purchased the building and it became the Oshkosh Clinic. It stayed as the Oshkosh Clinic for over 30 years until 1964, when the Oshkosh Savings and Loan purchased the building uh, with the intention to create more parking for their customers. In 1965, the Oshkosh Clinic moved to a new facility and their old building at 19 Jefferson was raised. And now it's a parking lot. Certainly the most impressive building that was ever on this street was the Elks Lodge. The Oshkosh Elks Lodge, uh, number 292, formed on December 4th, 1894, and were chartered by the Grand Lodge of the Benevolent and Protective Order of the Elks on July 11th, 1895. The Elks are a fraternal organization, not unlike the Masons, who of course, interestingly enough, had their uh, big lodge right around the corner. If you wanna know more about beautiful buildings like that built in the neoclassical style, Check out our Washington Avenue Neoclassical District tour on Vimond. Check it out. So the Elks held uh, their meetings in different locations uh, throughout the city for years until 1913 when they purchased the property at what was then 35 Jefferson. Their new lodge was completed in January of 1914 and the adjoining gymnasium was completed in 1927. At their height, the Elks had over a thousand members. Sadly, uh, rising maintenance costs and declining membership forced the Elks to leave the building in 1976. Arsonists badly damaged the building in 1978 and it was sold to the city and raised later that year. And so now it's a parking lot. Up until 2003, that parking lot was actually officially called the Elks Lot. The Elks are still active and have occupied their current facility on West Fernow Avenue since 1991. 
The last parking lot installed was the one now on the corner of Merritt and Jefferson. This site has housed a number of businesses uh, throughout the years. Some older people might remember the Tom Automotive Company that was there for years. In 1945, Sears Roebuck purchased the building. So a lot of people might remember the Sears that was there. And in 1971, WG&R Furniture Company took over the building. The building remained vacant through the late 1990s when LDR International, the authors of the Downtown Action Plan, identified it as a source of possible parking expansion. The building was raised in August of 2001. And now, it's a parking lot. So hey, I learned something. Again, if you like this video, uh, please hit like, subscribe, uh, share it with your friends. And with that, I'll see you later.